In this video, I'm gonna share with you two different ways to subtract fractions with unlike or uncommon denominators. The first way we're gonna be listing out common multiples in order to find a common denominator. So here we have three six minus one fourth. Our two denominators are different, so we can't subtract them the way that they are. We have three six and one fourth. So we're going to list out the multiples of six and list out the multiples in four and see what they have in common. Let's get count by six to determine what are the multiples of six. So six, 12, 18, 24, 30. We can go beyond that, but we're going to stop there and see what multiples they have in common. So for your four, we start with four, because we think about four times one is four, Four times two is eight, four times three would be 12, and so forth. So we keep going, we would get 16 next, and 20. So with what we have so far, let's see, do they have anything in common? Yes, they both have 12 in common. So we can use the 12 as a common denominator. So we're going to write that our new equivalent fraction for both will have a denominator of 12. Very similar to what we did when adding fractions with unlike denominators. So now looking at our new denominators, let's think about 1 fourth. What would the equivalent fraction be in 12? So 4 times what equals 12? So we know that if we look at our multiples of four, one, two, three groups of four equals 12. So what would three groups of one be? It would equal to three. Let's do the same thing for three, six. We see that two groups of six equals 12. So we know the six was multiplied by two. So we're gonna multiply that numerator by two as well. 3 times 2 equals 6. So here we have 3 6, the equivalent fraction is 6 twelfths. And for 1 fourth, an equivalent fraction is 3 twelfths. Now we can subtract because our denominators are alike or they're the same. So 6 twelfths minus 3 twelfths equals 3 twelfths. That can be simplified, but for this example, we're going to leave it as is. So 3 6 minus 1 fourth equals 3 twelfths. In example two, we're going to take 6 ninths and subtract the fraction to 6. Again, we're going to be listing out the common multiples to determine a common denominator in order to subtract. So we have 6 and we have 9 as our denominator. So let's write those out. So if we're skip counting by nines to find the multiples, we have nine, 18, 27, 36, 45. We have six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. So down here, I actually did six multiples of six. For nine, I only did five. We could have kept going, of course. So we see that they have 36 in common, but they also have 18 in common. This is where choice comes in. Whatever a number a student is more comfortable with, they can use that multiple as their common denominator. I always encourage students to try and go with the lowest common multiple for a common denominator, but it is not mandatory. If you have a higher multiple or higher denominator, you can later on simplify it if that is necessary, but it's not always necessary. So for this example, we're gonna use 18 as the common denominator. So again, like in example number one, let's think about what's gonna be a fraction equal to one that gives us 18 as a new denominator. So six times what equals 18? So looking at our list of multiples, one, two, three, we know three groups of six equals 18. We're going to have the same number for our numerator. So that shows that we have a fraction equal to one, which gives us an equivalent fraction for two, six. So two times three is six. Let's do the same thing for six ninths. 
9 times what equals 18? We know that two groups of 9 is 18. So we need to have the 2 as our numerator as well. 6 times 2 is 12. Now that our denominators are the same or alike, we can subtract 12 18 minus 6 18 equals 6 18. For our second way to subtract fractions with unlike denominators, we're going to use the same two examples. For our first example, 3 6 minus 1 4, but this time we're going to be multiplying our denominators to find a common denominator. So we know 6 times 4 equals 24, so that can be our common denominator as well. In our first example, we knew they had 12 as a common denominator, but they also have 24. Let's think again. 6 times what equals 24? 6 times 4. So we're going to do the same thing with our numerator. 3 times 4 equals 12. 3 6 is equivalent to 12 24. Let's do the same for our second fraction. We know that 4 times 6 equals 24, then what is 1 times 6? Well, that is 6. So our equivalent fraction for 1 fourth is 6 24ths. So now we have 12 24ths minus 6 24ths, which equals 6 24ths. And for our second example, for our second way to subtract fractions with unlike or uncommon denominators, again, we're going to use 6 ninths minus 2 6, and we're going to be multiplying our denominators to find a common denominator. So if we multiply 9 times 6, we get 54. In our first example, we looked for common multiples to get a common denominator, and we were able to use 18 and possibly 36. A higher or larger common multiple, if we continue listing out the multiples, would get us to 54. So we know our new denominator is going to be 54 for both fractions. Let's go ahead and put our subtraction symbol there, our minus symbol. And 9 times, we know 6 equals 54. So we're going to do the same thing with our numerator. 6 times 6 equals 36. So 6 ninths is equivalent to 36 54ths. Let's do the same thing for our 2 6. We know that 6 times 9 is 54. So 2 times 9 is 18. Our denominators are the same now. We can take 36 54ths minus 18 54ths, and we will get 18 54ths. 